personal diligence. To gain godly wisdom, we must sincerely and earnestly search for it. Here's Jean. It's interesting as we look at the Proverbs, actually as we look at the Bible, we see balance. And part of the balance here is that we've seen from previous principles and from the text that wisdom is available. It's available everywhere. However, this principle focuses on the fact that we need to search for it. If we don't search for it, we may not find it, even though it's available everywhere. And so that's what we read about here in uh, verses 1 and 2 as we move into chapter 2 of the book of Proverbs. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, listening closely to wisdom and directing your heart to understanding. Now the focus here is listening and learning, but you move on in the process to seeking and searching. So you'll see that in the next verses. Furthermore, if you call out to insight and lift your voice to understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it like hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. Now, I've never mined for silver or gold or any other precious metal, but I know enough about it that you've got to search for it, even if you're panning You've got to search for it. You've got to look for it. Of course, if you're in to mines, you're, you're really searching, and you're really struggling, and you're really working to find it. So here we have the human side. Here we have the, uh, the responsibility side. Yes, wisdom is available. It's everywhere. Even godly wisdom. Now, the other side of that is, so is worldly wisdom. And in some respects, worldly wisdom is even more available, and it comes looking for you <laughs> rather than you're looking for it. And I think that's uh, another concept, a dynamic here is, yes, we have to search for God's wisdom because worldly wisdom is looking for us, and it's so easy to find. But if you're going to find godly wisdom, even though it's available everywhere, you've got to seek for it. You've got to look for it. You've got to be diligent, personal diligence. There's another concept here that I think is, is really very important in relationship to wisdom, and that is not just head knowledge. Because we can learn a lot just in our head. There are a lot of great statements, even in the Proverbs and throughout the Bible. But head knowledge alone is not going to lead us to apply wisdom. We can know about wisdom, but real wisdom is when we apply it to our lives. And there's a lot about that here in the book of Proverbs. In terms of seeking and looking, uh, I couldn't help but think of the words of Jesus uh, on the Sermon on the Mount. When he said this, keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep searching, and you will find. Keep knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who searches finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. No question about the human responsibility here to seek, to look, to knock, to search. Now, this was the Sermon on the Mount, and certainly it applies uh, generally to lots of aspects of, of life, but I think in a very particular way, it applies to what Solomon is writing about. It applies to godly wisdom. Now, here's a uh, question for reflection and response. Why do some Christians fail to study the Scriptures and even refuse to listen when God's truth is being taught by godly leaders. Well, I think a most fundamental answer to that question is that sometimes the pleasures of this world is more attractive and easier 
to engage in, more fleshly satisfying than to meet together with God's people and hear the Word of God. In fact, meeting together to hear the Word of God, if indeed we're not walking in the will of God, even as Christians, we're not going to be very comfortable. In that sense, we can avoid the Word because as the Word of God cuts across behavior that is out of the will of God, <laughs> I know in my own life, I don't feel very good about it. And I have to make a choice. Am I going to walk in the will of God or am I going to continue to walk out of the will of God? And if I continue to walk out of the will of God, then I'm just going to avoid hearing about the will of God. This is the natural tendency. And I think that's a reason that some Christians, even though we have the Scriptures, they don't study them. They don't really listen to them. Or if they do, it goes in one ear and out the other. They're following the way of worldly wisdom rather than godly wisdom. I love Paul's prayer when it comes to heart knowledge. And I pray this prayer. I try to personalize this prayer. And I think it's something that will help us to seek God's wisdom. Because on our own, we can't even seek it. God is there to help us when we Make effort, every effort, to do what God wants us to do. And here's that prayer. Paul said, I pray that He, that is the Lord, may grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with power in the inner man through His Spirit. Now, that's a wonderful statement. The inner man. It's metaphorical. But we know what it's talking about when you read on. Because he says, And that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now, he's not saying that Jesus the man can be in our hearts or in our inner being. That not the man Christ Jesus, but the Holy Spirit of God that the Father sent to be with us forever and to dwell within us. That's the amazing thing about the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. So he's talking about Christ in the person of the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts through faith. He's not saying that if we don't have faith, He's going to walk away from us. But what He is saying is that He is active. He is dwelling in our hearts as we walk by faith, enabling us to seek this wisdom, to gain this wisdom, to apply this wisdom, and to be the people that God wants us to be. Paul continues, he said, I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width and height and depth of God's love. Wow. That's incomprehensible right there. But God wants us to know more and more of His love. And, he says, to know the Messiah's love that surpasses what? Knowledge. So you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And there the fullness of God is the character of God. It's not some kind of a static experience. It's the character of God. Being holy as God is holy. But here, I love the, the doxology following this great prayer, which is a part of the prayer. Now to him who's able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. In other words, God doesn't ask us to do this seeking all by ourselves. We can't do it all by ourselves. But we must seek. That's human responsibility. But He's there to enable us to be strong in the Lord and His mighty strength. So here's the principle. To gain godly wisdom, we must sincerely and earnestly search for it. And when we do, God will enable us to find it.